What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're talking about where DJs get their music from in 2023. Let's get straight into it. First up then, it is the new kid on the block, but more and more DJs are turning to this type of service. I am of course talking about streaming services. Now, I have done a full video covering a variety of streaming services. If you haven't checked out that video, link is down in the description down below. In terms of the main ones used by DJs, it seems to be Beatport for electronic music and BeatSource as well. BeatSource is probably the most comprehensive as it is a subsidiary of DJ City. Now, without going into too much detail, because of course I have a full dedicated video to this, streaming services are still pretty expensive. BeatSource, for example, the full premium subscription, which in my opinion you are going to need, is $35 a month. And you do have to consider that you do not own any of that music for the price. You are going to, however, need that premium subscription because it allows you to store tracks in an offline locker, which is going to be critical if you're working at an event, a club, a bar, or wherever you are, and you don't have an internet connection. But streaming services definitely are on the rise. They are here to stay, and they are a source of music for DJs in 2023. The second source of music for DJs is the good old trusty record pool. I think still the most predominant source of music for the majority of DJs in 2023. Now put very simply, if you're not familiar with the concept of record pools, it's a pool of music, you create an account on there and then you can download as many songs from that pool of music to your laptop or to your computer and you can then go off and DJ with them. One of the benefits of a record pool over a streaming service is that you actually own a copy of the track you are downloading. So you don't need an internet connection and, and it's a pretty affordable monthly subscription with these pools, in my opinion. They usually sit at around $20 a month. So in my opinion, quite affordable for an unlimited amount of music. But of course, if you're not downloading 20 tracks in a month, then it ends up being a bit expensive. In my opinion, one of the best ones is Zip DJ. I get all of my music from there. So do check them out. Link in the description down below. I'm not affiliated with Zip DJ, however. Source of music number three is an online record store. Now, there's many of these. The best ones for electronic music, in my opinion, are Beatport and TrackSource. There is also Juno Download as well. There are several of these, but those are the main ones that I use. And then for anything else, mainstream, iTunes and Amazon Music. Nothing special and an online record store literally does what it says on the tin. You pay per download, you get an actual copy of that track that you've purchased onto your computer and then you can go away and use that for your gig. These types of stores are great because they fill in the gaps where record pools may not have everything. And also as well with a record store, you can literally buy as many or as little tracks that will fit your budget and also as well your needs because you don't need to sign up and there is no commitment. So online record stores, I thoroughly recommend them. The only thing with things like iTunes and also Amazon Music is you may not get sort of DJ friendly edits, DJ friendly versions, and also as well tools like transitions and bootlegs and mashups and things. However, still a very, very solid and very reliable source of music. Source number four then, and this is actually physical copies of music. Now, the majority of DJs will be DJing digitally, as in they will plug in a USB, they plug in a laptop into a controller, CDJs, and they DJ away. However, vinyl, that's one of these, if you don't know what it is. Vinyl sales are actually on the increase in 2022, which is absolutely fantastic to see. This is a very old fashioned way of DJing, but there might be a few DJs out there that are going back to using physical copies of music in their DJ set. So really good to see, and I think it is important to mention it here today. The convenience of a laptop far outshines having to lug around hundreds and hundreds of records to gigs, so do bear that in mind. Vinyl as well takes up room and it also is pretty expensive, so something to consider. But it's great to see that 
physical music sales are on the increase once again. The fifth source of music for DJs are mailing lists. Now, I think mailing lists are a little bit of a dying breed. However, they are still relevant in 2023. Record pools have really overtaken sort of mailing lists, but they are still out there. They do still exist. But basically what a mailing list is, is if you are DJing out on a regular basis to a fairly large crowd regularly, then you can sign up to a mailing list. Basically what this enables you to do is get music for free from certain record labels in exchange for a review on the individual tracks. Typically you would rate it out of five, you'd give some comments on if you are going to play it, if you got, got a good reaction or if you think you're going to get a good reaction to a particular track. You are going to have to be a fairly established DJ to get onto a mailing list. Here in the UK, power records are pretty big still, they're still around been going for years and also as well a company called Hyperactive. And then the final source of music for DJs in 2023 is a bit of a miscellaneous category. So in this I'm going to include download gates first and foremost. Now a download gate is essentially a site whereby you have to complete a few actions in order to get a download of music. The most well-known one that I've seen on the internet, which I regularly use, is called Hype Tip. Now, basically how this works is DJs, producers upload unofficial remixes, bootlegs, or original tracks that haven't been signed to record labels onto hosted services like SoundCloud. And then in order to get access to a download of that particular track, remix, or whatever it is, you then have to complete a few actions in order to open up the download. So it's like a gate that you have to open. In terms of getting access to those tracks, you have to give away information like your email address. You might have to comment on that particular track on SoundCloud, follow the artist on Instagram or Spotify. So there's a few different steps that the artist will set in order for you to unlock the download. What I would say with this approach is just be careful as sometimes you are going to be having to give away your information. So, you know, you might have to sign up to a mailing list, for example. So just think, are you really going to play out that track? Because you could end up being on thousands of mailing lists if you're downloading thousands of tracks in this particular way or end up following a load of people on Instagram that you really have no intention of engaging with long term. So just be careful. Is a download gate legal? Technically on paper, I would say no. So another reason to be careful because the download as well could contain malicious code or it could be a virus or something like that. So just be careful is what I would say because these are unofficial remixes, they are unofficial bootlegs. However, Sites like Hypetit have been around for a number of years and they are very well known in the industry. The final element that I'm going to include in this miscellaneous category is a website called Bandcamp. Now, this doesn't fit into a traditional online record store because a lot of the artists on here are not getting signed by the major labels, hence why they don't feature on the online record stores. But this can be a little bit of a hidden gem in order to find some of those really obscure remixes and also bootlegs and some really unique original stuff as well. But typically artists will have a page, they host their music on this platform and for a small fee, you can then go on and download their track. So there we have it, a comprehensive guide as to where DJs are getting their music from in 2023. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as ever. If I've missed anything, please do let me know where you're getting your music from. I'm genuinely intrigued to know. And if you want to find out a little bit more about streaming services, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video, then that video up there is what you should watch next. And I will see you next time.